Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity. I want to congratulate the majority and minority leader and my colleagues, Mr. Speaker, for having to, to resist the temptation to go and hide, just like our colleagues have done, Mr. Speaker. I would be somewhere in Kimondi Forest near Kapsabet, running away from my and I want to ask, in fact, this should be corruption, where you run away from your duty, Mr. Speaker. I remember when we were supposed to resume is when unfortunate events and incidences were happening in the city, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy that I'm among the senators who found it wise to continue with our duty because we are being paid to proceed with our duty as envisaged by Article 96, Mr. Speaker. As a speaker, I want to tell Kenyans, including the, our young brothers and sisters, the Generation Z, because some of us are millennials, that we have heard you, we listen to you, we apologize for some of the transgressions that might have escaped our attention in addressing some of the challenges, Mr. Speaker. As a speaker, while a lot has gone through in this country, we must agree that some of these challenges that we face as a nation, Mr. Speaker, built up for many years, many de decades, Mr. Speaker, many challenges since, Mr. Speaker, the onset and independence, both pre and most post-colonial independence of this republic, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on Tuesday, when the young people decided to visit parliament, and enjoy the hospitality. Although they went away with a number of flags, Mr. Speaker, and also were able to take photos at the floor of the house, at the National Assembly to be precise, and I saw one of the pastors, I don't know, speaking in the, in the, at that aftermath, Mr. Speaker, it was very unfortunate, Mr. Speaker. I saw people who were running Elta and Skelter, Mr. Speaker. The unfortunate part as we was some of the media houses were streaming live, Mr. Speaker, exposing the lives of many members of parliament. Mr. Speaker, I know yourself, not specifically, but the substantive speaker and Senator Chute and other colleagues said to use ambulances, Mr. Speaker, to escape the arm, Mr. Speaker. Even as that happened, Mr. Speaker, and I want to point out this, under Article 118, Article 34 and 35, right to freedom of information and media, we should not, even at any given time, Mr. Speaker, block or deny access to media the way it has been done, Mr. Speaker. We should look access of media to the floor and to parliament prisons case by case, Mr. Speaker, because I'm told there is a silent gag order that has been issued against the access of media to the prisons very unfair. Kenyans need to know what is happening, especially as the legislators transact business, Mr. Speaker. So I hope through your office you can consult and ensure that case by case, while I do not agree that media were able to expose members of parliament and report life that they were being evacuated through the tunnel or being taken away by the ambulances or they were changing clothes, Mr. Speaker. I, I met one member of National Assembly decided to remove the entire suit and wear a vest and a boxer to escape the rat, Mr. Speaker, through Landi Maui, Mr. Speaker, in this city. While those are tactics that people evaded what was happening in that day, Mr. Speaker, it is not a justification to deny media access and access to media to the prisons of parliament. And therefore, I want to ask your office and parliamentary service commission to, res to, to resist the temptation to give out cons unconstitutional orders of denying access of media, because Kenyans need to know what we are doing. Mr. Speaker, I've used an example of 1932, when there were allegations that there was a letter that was being sent to the House of Congress and Senate that had poison. The Congress decided to, to close the House and run away. In the subsequent elections, the entire congressmen were voted out, but the Senate of the Republic of United States of America remained true to its cause and addressed the I remember. 
And that is why we have distinguished ourselves as a speaker as the upper house. Mr. So speaker, there are many issues that young people have raised. Issue of corruption, issue of governance, both at national and county governments, Mr. Speaker. Issue of lack of opportunities. Issue of nepotism, Mr. Speaker. Issue of not being listened to, Mr. Speaker. There are many challenges, and I want to assure the Gen Z and any other Kenyan, Mr. Speaker, Parliament is a public place. If they were proper organization, they would have access to Parliament. Many Kenyans access Parliament. I want to put this straight, Mr. Speaker. Under Article 126, 1 of the Constitution of Kenya, Mr. Speaker, Parliament can sit anywhere. And I want to call upon the GNC and any other Kenyan can sit in Uru Park. Parliament can sit in Migori. That is why we have Senate machinery, Mr. Speaker. The Constitution gives us as a Parliament to sit even in Carissa, in Mandera, even in your county, Mr. Speaker, and listen to the Kenyans. And I'm happy as we talk this, Mr. Speaker, on the Senate Mashinani, we are doing it in Busia. We have done it in Makweni. We did it in Turkana. We have done it in Wasingishu, Mr. Speaker. Kenyans should know that Parliament is ready to listen to them. Under Article 126 of the Constitution, Parliament can sit anywhere within the border. Even if they want us to sit in KCC, we can sit there, Mr. Speaker, and listen to Kenyans, and especially the GNC, Mr. Speaker. Number three, Mr. Speaker, from the onset, I want to send my deepest condolences, Mr. Speaker, from my family, from myself and the great people of Nandi County, to many Kenyans who have lost their lives, unfortunately, and wish quick recovery to many Kenyans who, as both, Mr. Speaker, have uh, endured injuries during this, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, even when we exercise Article 37, Mr. Speaker, the law is that it must be peaceful and unarmed. On the first few days when the young people came out, Mr. Speaker, the protests were largely peaceful. It was later, Mr. Speaker, inflated by the criminals, Mr. Speaker. I've seen incidences where the security officers have been injured. You remember the inspector of the police that lost both hands, Mr. Speaker? We have a number of police officers who they have injured and some have lost their lives as well as the protesters, Mr. Speaker. I want to ask... Even as you protest under Article 37, Mr. Speaker, which is your right, peacefully and unarmed, let us resist the temptation of allowing goons and criminals to infiltrate, Mr. Speaker. And I want to challenge the DCI and other security agencies, Mr. Speaker. Should anybody who is a criminal or goon who is looting public property, Mr. Speaker, because I know, Mr. Speaker, the business community was stating that, and I hope the Ministry of Interior will, will sit and evaluate. At the end of all this chaos, Mr. Speaker, because I saw they were putting value of looted property to be around 3 billion Kenyan shillings, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, I want to challenge, Mr. Speaker, that even as young people and any other they should do so in a peaceful manner, and the police should provide, uh, Mr. Speaker, the necessary uh, security. Mr. Speaker, I want to borrow the many other issues that my colleagues and associates strongly with. Ordinarily, it should not be the president responding to all these other issues, especially on regular security breaches, I speak. I would have expected even the police spokesperson. We used to have somebody called Owino as the police spokesperson. Mr. Speaker, Brian Shusho. Now we have the Inspector General of Police. In fact, the only time Inspector General of Police has responded is when he saw allocations of fatalities in a heat. He sent a statement, Mr. Speaker. Even not legally, even morally, Mr. Speaker, the Inspector General of Police should have even appeared on a regular basis to update the country on security situation, Mr. Speaker, and tell the country how many people, unfortunately, have died, how many have injured, how many properties have been looted, or what is the state of the security, Mr. Speaker. What is the state of the homeland security, Mr. Speaker? I think that is the least we expected from Inspector General of Police, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, I think his stay in office is no longer tenable, Mr. Speaker. We must do a proper reshuffle within the security apparatus of this country, especially the homeland security, Mr. Speaker, so that we have a police service, not a police force, as was envisaged by the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. So I agree with my colleagues 
that the inspector general of police must be called out for failing to provide leadership, Mr. Speaker, for failing to morally and legally even update the country on security situations, Mr. Speaker. We are being told there was demos, Mr. Speaker, yesterday. The others being planned on the way. The least we expect cases of where police have shot, Mr. Speaker, incidences. It should be briefing the country at the what circumstances that the police shoot some of the protesters and are they working together with independent policing oversight authority? I poor Mr. Speaker. Number three, Mr. Speaker, is on corruption. My colleagues have put it, we, we know, Mr. Speaker, when I raise an issue of opulence of some of the cabinet ministers, I was blasted, I was accused of being jealous, I was accused of not knowing how to do deals, Mr. Speaker, I was accused of coming to take tea and mandas in, in parliament instead of going to Tanzania and other countries to broker deals, Mr. Speaker, which is very unfortunate. And I was just calling out, don't eat too much and vomit before the feet of Kenyans. As a former ambassador, I would say, Mr. Speaker, even in my culture, where I come from, you don't eat and open your shirt. It is a culture, Mr. Speaker. And I, I called out, and you remember, I was being blasted left, right, and center, Mr. Speaker, and I warned them that if this trend of displaying opulence by members of parliament and some cabinet ministers without humility, and I'm happy, Mr. Speaker, for the last two weekends, at least we, the, the quality of hair has improved. Because when choppers were crisscrossing, it was also affecting our agenda of climate change, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> where people would fly in, land, reorganize the program of a funeral or an a church service, speak, insult other elected leaders, Mr. Speaker, call them dimwits, call them fools, the way I was being called in Nandi last year, give out the, the money that God knows where they got it from, millions of shillings, and they fly away from the chopper, disrupting, Mr. Speaker, a social function for the next one hour or 30 minutes, Mr. Speaker, until they settle, Mr. Speaker. So the issue of corruption, and I think, Mr. Speaker, as a proposal, to the, to the president and ESCC, Mr. Speaker, we must start doing lifestyle audits to all of us, state officers and all governors. Any person who is serving in a public office, we must do lifestyle audit. We must know so that the reason Kenyans were on the streets, the reason GNC were calling us out is because they are wondering, how can you contribute 12 of 20 million shillings in an Arambe, and yet they don't have even 100 shillings. They were wondering that minister would be an Arambe counting millions of shillings, and the roads are not there, Mr. Speaker. And the water is not there, Mr. Speaker. So they are wondering. We are telling them the economy is bad, but we preside an Arambe worth millions of shillings, Mr. Speaker. It is not bad to do an Arambe. It is not bad to help people, but we must do their and I'm telling you, I know some people even who had bought shirts for funerals, dark suits, because their only uh, their only thing was just when they hear social function, Senator Sifuna, they appear, but they have never visited the bad roads that are in our counties or look even at the water, Mr. Speaker. But they will find time to go and insult other leaders, Mr. Speaker. I think corruption also is not doing your job, Mr. Speaker. It doesn't necessarily that you have stolen, failing to do your job with integrity, reporting to your duty station. In and therefore, number three, I propose that ESCC must be dispensed, disbanded forthwith with capital letters. They have failed from national to counties, Mr. Speaker. In fact, when you steal, they come and see you, you might attend, they slap you on the wrist and they go away. If today ESCC was serious, three quarters of governors would be in jail by now. I can tell you for free. Because even some of the people serving at the state, the state officers, Mr. Speaker, they should be in jail. But ESCC have failed us. While I agree they don't have enough resources, it is time we disband the ESCC and restructure ESCC and redevelop ESCC to win back the public confidence, Mr. Speaker, of this republic going into the future. If you ask yes, and friends and colleagues, I have been privileged to serve as JLAC chair. And I remember we didn't invite ESCC in the last session. 
The only conviction ESCC had done is a bribery of 20,000 shillings. What are we telling Kenyans? What are we telling Gen Z when they can see this club that you have built somewhere in a town, they can see these are proceeds of crime. And that the ESCC will turn a blind eye, Mr. Speaker. We must resist, and I want to request, even as ESCC struggle with the challenges of resources, we must disband, restructure, to win the public confidence of this republic, Mr. Speaker. Number four, Mr. Speaker, before I finish with austerities, this issue of SRC increasing the salaries of members of parliament and state officers is it is in bad faith. It wants to increase the public discontent, Mr. Speaker. And SRC must be called out, Mr. Speaker. You remember when UHC colleagues, interns, we invited SRC here. They told us there is no money to increase for UHC doctors or JSS. But they are quick to increase money for us members of parliament to create discontent and fuel the country into discontentment of members of parliament, Mr. Speaker. SRC was, we never requested for the increment of salaries. We have never. SRC is abusing its own power by trying to set us against the public. And I'm happy a number of colleagues have responded to this blackmail, misleading corruption by SRC, Mr. Speaker. And I, says, I, I also propose SRC must be disbanded, number, Mr. Speaker, and serve. Let the SRC commissioners not serve monthly. They should serve as because the problem we have with SRC, they are not serving part-time. They are busy trying to set and regulate salaries so that they justify their work in office. Why SRC chair is giving herself a 10 million car grant for a Prado from Toyota, Kenya. She is increasing her salary. She gets two car grants within four years, Mr. Speaker. The SRC, and I want to say, and tell Kenyans, I am not interested. In fact, what I'm proposing going into the future, members of parliament, we should serve in part-time, just like other countries, Mr. Speaker. Then we agree how it works out. If that is the solution that will bring back the confidence of this Republic of Kenyans, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on judiciary, I served and I have the privilege of information. Mr. Speaker, Kenyans file more than 500,000 cases per year. I saw the chief respectfully saying they can open up to midnight to add all these issues that we are experiencing. But she has never done anything about creating backlog, Mr. Speaker. The bitterness Kenyans have is that they have a court case. They have not gotten a court order for those people who do not have means. They are suffering, Mr. Speaker. But the Chief Justice, to appear right and to appear popular, not to appear right, to appear popular but not right, is just giving a public relation exercise to the gallery by saying now since everybody is no longer safe from GNZ, and you know he was visited the other day in his office, he, she thinks by saying let us handle all the protesters being brought to court, Mr. Speaker, who are not or goons, is fair. The real problem with judiciary is he should give us the matrix the timeline of clearing cases, Mr. Speaker, and how can you justify from 1982, there is a court case up to today, a succession case, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's corruption. Kenyans are very, Mr. Speaker, are mad with all the institutions. And I want to tell everybody who is serving as a state officer, no one is no longer safe. Senator Majority Leader Aaron Cheruat will tell you, Wamboka Wanami and Samuel Atande. When they wanted to cross for safety, they could not. Because the people say, Ndiyo wale. Ndiyo wale. And I'm telling you some things happen that I'm not comfortable to share because this is parliamentary guided program. It is a PG rated, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, finally, on austerity measures, I will tell, like I can see Senator Fak is interested, I will tell him in camera. Mr. Speaker, I, I, pro, I plead with the President and all of us, just, just in two minutes, Mr. Speaker, please let us not cut amount that we are going to JSS for 6,000 teachers. Most of these 46,000 are young people. If we can co co confirm them to permanent and pension, Mr. Speaker, we shall also be fair to young people on these 46,000 junior secondary schools. Mr. Speaker, number two, let us not reduce the allocation to counties. Because it was not pro rata, as majority leader said, it was based on equity. Just a minute, Mr. Speaker. And also, finally, Mr. Speaker, let us not 
uh, cut money that was going to confirm the UHC intern doctors, among others, within the medical sector, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, with those very many remarks, I support this motion. Let us bring back this nation to where it should be. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Tasifuna. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. First, let me start by saying that uh, 